all of this revolves around something called use case diagram so what is use case diagram so use case diagram looks something like this so you'll have two things in the use case diagram okay one which is an oval shaped entity which is known as use case and then there is someone called an actor right so if you compare it with the dfd diagram there is a reversal so in dfd this was known as an entity which is the entity which was interacting with your software system so that has changed here the actor is the external entity who is going to interact with the system and the system is represented by use case so what is a use case use case is a function or a functionality of a particular software system okay so that is where the difference comes in the picture so actor is the external entity which interacts with the system which is represented by use case okay another thing which comes in use cases is the script of the use case also known as use case specification document where you describe various scenarios which are associated with a particular functionality so for example if there is a functionality in a system called login into the system when you talk about scenarios what are the different scenarios scenarios number scenario number 1 correct user id and password scenario number 2 incorrect password what should happen third user id does not exist right these are the different scenarios and from a usability perspective the system needs to behave in a different manner so when the user id is and password is correct then the system should allow to log in into this or enter the system if the password is not correct the system should show an option showing that if you forgotten your password you can use forgot password if the user id is not existed then the system should show that it seems you are not a registered user of the system why don't you sign up these are three different scenarios of a single functionality called login into the system okay now if you really look at this approach of analyzing analyzing a system it is more real and it is more it is closer to the real life scenario in which software systems are supposed to behave and that is one of the reasons why you see that in most of the cases as you will encounter people have stopped using structured analysis technique some people are still using it some companies will still you make use of er diagrams and dfd diagram some companies will still make a combination of use cases and er data they'll say okay i will be i will define all my scenarios and behavior using use case model but i will use er diagrams for creating my entity scenario that's a very common scenario where people mix and match let's look at an example of a use case model okay this use case diagram is for point of sale terminal the point of sale terminal is nothing but when you go to a retail store and you encounter a cashier who will be billing your items which you have uh, you intend to buy and then generate a bill for accepting the payment okay now the first thing you must look at is this rectangular box this box defines the boundary of your software system in perspective so when you are making a diagram or a model your scope is limited you are talking about a particular software application so it's very important to define what is within the scope and what is outside this so that's why this diagram comes into picture now the first thing you will notice that there is a use case called buy item and who is buying item the customer 
second side of the diagram shows a cashier. The cashier is logging into the system and generating the bill. Right? So these oval shaped diagrams are known as use cases. These people of human like symbol are known as actors. Is that clear? Yes. Right. But this uh, these actors can be systems as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Have you studied about use cases? Sorry? Have you studied about use cases? No, I was reading that book. So in that uh, there was an example that uh, these actors can be uh, system, can be present system as well. Yes, yes, that's very important because that's going to come next. Okay. okay. So who are going to be the actors? Okay. So the actors could be anybody who is external to the system. It's very important to note that an actor cannot be internal to a system. So anything which is outside the system boundary, but is interacting with the system is an actor. So there could be human beings, there could be machines, there could be other systems. So if the system is connected to a SAP system for sending the financial, uh, uh, the transactions to the SAP system for accounting, that is also an act. There could be some sensors who would be sensing certain output from the system. Right? Like in an aircraft, there are a lot of sensors which are kept. When the aircraft is flying, they have sensors which uh, senses the outside temperature, which senses the altitude. There are a lot of sensors which are kept. So for an aircraft, these sensors are entities or the actors. Okay. Database is not an actor. Why? Because database is part of the software system. It cannot be considered as an actor. Now, printer is a slightly uh, uh, dual case where in some cases printer could be an actor. In some cases printer may not be an actor. Okay, so the printer is used to, to publish uh, or the printer report as an output, then printer, printer becomes an actor. Okay. Uh, I have a question here. Yes. So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, every external system is a, uh, is an actor, right? So uh, when we talk about the loan application system uh, that we talked about, uh, so basically if we see Sybil as a database, so does it become uh, an actor because it is uh, external to the system? No, the only criteria is not being external. The criteria is one external to the system, but in some or the other way interacting either to provide a source of information or as a destination of information. Right. right. If it is some information from your system, then it's an actor. Or if it is providing some information, then that's an actor. So in our case, it was providing some information. Right. So, so Sybil in that case is an actor. Yes. Okay. Uh, another thing is that if, uh, uh, if for example, uh, it's an inter, uh, it's an internal system. Let's say for, for salary purposes. Okay. Uh, to calculate how much uh, salary a particular employee gets. Now this system accesses various databases which are internal to the company, but not exclusively meant for the system. Okay. So these databases are uh, uh, actors or uh, would they uh, not be actors? See, external does not mean external to the company. External okay. refers to external to this software system which you are uh, focusing upon. So when you say a payroll system, external meaning external to the payroll system not external to the company right uh, so the database uh, if if a particular database is exclusively meant for the payroll system it will be counted as internal yes and if it is not exclusively for the payroll system it can be counted as external right yes 
ओके ना एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम यू कैन सी दैट वी आर शोइंग समथिंग व्हिच इज व्हिच काइंड ऑफ लुक्स लाइक हायरार्की ओके सो देयर इज अ सेल्स पर्सन व्हिच इज फर्दर डिवाइडेड इनटू मे बी अ रिटेल सेल्स मैनेजर एंड एन इंस्टीट्यूशनल सेल्स मैनेजर ओके सो बेसिकली बोथ ऑफ देम आर सेल्स पर्संस बट द नेचर ऑफ वर्क इज डिफरेंट okay now this is something which is very common in a real life scenario a lot of such situations come where people have things in common but still there are certain specific things to them also in this case both of them are sales people they will have certain things in common like they will have a target they will have uh, maybe some uh, uh, lead management system to uh, to, to work with so many things will be common but in addition there will be things which are which will be specific to the nature of job as well one of them is handling only retail leads another one is handling only call okay this is a very very common scenario and the structured approach was not catering to these kind of situations that's why people started to get into something which was more more suitable for real life scenario. and that's why this object oriented approach and the uml models have come into existence okay because they are now capable of representing the real life scenario. okay so we'll come across certain situations later on where you will hear about classes and objects okay which will uh, uh, discuss as and when we will not get into too much of details we'll just look at from a uh, broader perspective now with the use cases there are certain concepts which are important to un to understand okay so just like we discussed about a sales manager having been common between a retail sales manager and in the corporate sales manager similarly you will you realize that there are certain functionalities in a system which might be common across various functions or maybe something which is used by many functionalities in turn for example if there is an atm machine to be considered you realize that whether you are withdrawing money you are doing a funds transfer in all of the cases card identification is a common function or whether you are going to check your balance uh, in, the, in your account or in all of that card identif identification is a must okay that is something which is a common function and that is represented by something called include okay so this relationship which is shown here is to be read as the withdraw functionality includes card and identification function okay and this sign which is here it's like this this is this sign double less than sign and double greater than sign these two symbols represent something called stereotype in uml diagram so stereotypes is nothing but representing the type of a relationship or type of a functionality okay you know the literal meaning of stereotype is type casting something okay so when you say it's a very stereotyping stereotype thought it means it's a little more backward thought okay or very fixed thought but that's a type of representing something so similarly here it means withdraw functionality includes our identification function similarly there is another relationship which is called extend now the most interesting part to note here is in this case we are reading from left to right saying withdraw functionality includes card identification from left to right and the arrow is also in that direction here you will notice that it's a little different direction 
it's in opposite direction okay i will explain you what extend means so extend represents an error condition or a special condition okay it is it means that let's have an example if there is a requirement to modify certain order which is placed by a customer okay then there is a special case here if the order value is greater than or equal to 5 lakhs then it has to be approved by somebody higher up okay now this is represented by extend stereo type okay and this is read as read from right to left not from left to right so get approval extends money or modify order okay or we can say it in the third passive voice saying modify order is extended by get approval function okay so two things are represented by extend stereotype one is a special case like this one or the error case both of them can be represented by extend okay the third and the last part is something which we have already seen in the uh, few slides back which is the hierarchy based relationship okay so just like in case of sales manager we had a hierarchy where we had two child kind of sales managers in the functionality front also we can have a similar kind of a scenario okay so in a call center scenario handling call is a basic functionality but the sales call will be handled differently or by somebody else whereas the technical assistance or the support call l1 l2 calls will be handled by a different team okay so there is a distinct uh, differentiation in terms of who handles a sales call who handles a tech support call but essentially the call handling will go through the same mechanism so it will land at the ivr and based on the button or the number chosen by the customer it will be then redirected to the specific uh, person okay so this kind of a relationship is also uh, possible to be shown but not shown very frequently because it complicates the whole diagram see the diagrams and the models are not made to confuse people on the actually on the contrary diagrams are made to make information much more clearer rather than confusing people so a lot of details you can avoid if it is getting in the way of making things easier to understand okay i am just telling you all these techniques because you need to know be very judicious in terms of when you are making diagrams it should be able to clarify things and it should be very clear as to how things are going okay this will will come to look now the last part of the use case other than the diagram is creating the script of the use case or creating the use case specification doc the use case specs document will have various things listed as part of the use case so these are the different things which are going to come in use cases so there is a name there is the actors trigger preconditions post conditions success scenario and alternative we are going to see them in details in a little